Welcome back to the channel guys, it's Miles. Now today, I'm in the Christmas spirit and it's never too early to throw up them lights, get that Christmas tree up. Even though it's not even Thanksgiving yet, still, I'm in the spirit. It's story time today and I'm gonna give you guys the real life breakdown of me fighting a legend and how much the UFC paid me to do it. I'm gonna give you guys the breakdown like I usually do, how much money I made from the fight purse, my show and my win, how much money I made in sponsors, what my expenses were, and at the end of the day, how much I actually brought home in my pocket. And make sure to stick around to the whole video because there's a little present I'm gonna add in the end. At least it was a present for me. I wasn't expecting it, but we'll get to more of that later. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name's Miles. I began training at a young age and I turned professional when I was 19. Mixed martial arts, all I've done my whole life. I've had 14 fights in the UFC and I'm currently signed with Bellator and I'm going on my fourth fight with them. Over the years, I've basically fought in the cage, taken my money that I've made and saved it until I can buy an asset and invest in an asset that provides cash flow. That's at the baseline, the nuts and bolts of what I do. That's it. I buy assets that produce cash flow. I personally really love real estate and we talk a lot about it at this channel. But it really doesn't matter whether you buy real estate, whether you start a part-time business, whether you invest in stocks that provide dividends, whatever your game plan is, the main thing is just to invest so that way you can work hard while you're younger right now and that way when you get older, you can sit back, you can enjoy the finer things in life like going out to Chili's with your boys, smashing thumbs up buttons, elbowing subscribe buttons because that's what it's all about. You work hard and you want to enjoy the fruits of your labor one day. So since I began making money back in 2012, I basically just saved it and invested it. And it's gotten to a point today where I own over 20 rental properties. You can check out the video where I reveal my whole real estate portfolio. And I also on paper am a net worth of a million dollars, which is pretty cool to say because I've been working really hard my whole life and I really wasn't born with any money. I've had to work for everything I've received and I like it that way. There's a different feeling when you work hard for something, you put in that time, that consistent effort, and that delayed gratification. When you make sacrifices now to better yourself in the future, it just hits a little different, it feels a little different, and that's how I've earned everything that I've gotten. Nobody has given me any freebies. Everything from the start of my career to where I am now, it's dedication, hard work, and making good conscious decisions. And that's what this channel is about. Hopefully you guys can learn something about investing, learn something maybe from my experiences. So let's get into the story. This guy that I'm about to fight, he's a legend from the pride days. I mean, he's got epic wins over guys like Jens Pulver, who he knocked out. People like Dwayne Ludwig, who he beat. Guys like Mac Danzig, who he beat. This guy, to me, in the old pride days, is a OG. I came up watching him, watching his famous fight with Nick Diaz. Man was at a scrap, back and forth. Nick ended up beating him, but that's still one of the best fights that have ever happened. So needless to say, this fight was big to me because I grew up watching this guy. At this time, I was 5-0 in the UFC. I was coming off of a big win over Diego Sanchez, and we were set to fight with Takanori Gomi at UFC Japan. I was co-main event, and it was September 20th in 2014. Now this fight took place in Tokyo, Japan, which to me, that is sick. I mean, who out there wouldn't want to fight in Tokyo, Japan at the famous Satama Arena? Some of the best fighters to ever grace the, the cage or the, the canvas in general fought in Satama Arena. Again, to me, the old Pride days, I'm a big fan of that. So if anybody out there is a Pride fan, make sure to drop a comment below. I want to know. I want to see where all my Pride fans are at. Now I flew out to this fight a week in advance. I went to Japan. I basically immersed myself in the culture. I don't know if anybody out there has ever gotten the chance to travel abroad, gotten out of the US, but it was a huge culture shock for me and memories that I'll never forget. Once I got the hang of everything, I basically set into my routine. I hit my workouts with my coaches, I hit my sauna sessions, I did my sprints, and did everything I needed to do to get dialed in for the fight on Saturday night. Now I made weight without a problem, and how it works in the fight game is you get half your money when you show, Basically, it's guaranteed pay, and then you get your other half of your money if you win. Now, thank God I made weight because what happens if you don't make weight is you get fined 20% of your purse, which is huge. I mean, that's 20% right off the tops. And thank God I didn't have to go that route. I made the weight safely, and I was all dialed in for this fight. Now, I remember backstage, I remember kind of 
staying in my zone, staying ready. I was going out there to fight a childhood legend. That'd be like if you were a basketball player as a kid and you grew up watching Michael Jordan or LeBron James. And now fast forward and you're in your 20s and you actually get the opportunity to go up and, and play basketball on the biggest stage, the NBA against them. So needless to say, I was excited, I was motivated, and backstage, I was ready to rock. Now I walked out to the cage, I immersed myself in the crowd, the feeling, the energy in Japan, and I got into the octagon and I was ready to rock and roll. Thank God it was my night. Sometimes you zig, sometimes you zag, you get caught. But this night, I was able to come out there, hit him with a one, a three, and a two. 90 seconds into the fight, I dropped Gomi and I finished him with punches. I was ecstatic, I was just like, no way, I was ready to go 15 hard minutes of a war, some of the scraps Comey's been in, but it was my night, I caught him, and thank God, finished him. Now immediately after that, I remember Brian Stan getting me there on the mic asking, what do I want? And I was honestly, I was just thinking, hey, I want a little bit of sushi, a little bit of sake, and I wanna mingle with the Japanese fans and enjoy this whole process. So let's get to some of the numbers of what did I actually get paid. Now at this time in my career, I made $12,000 a show from the UFC, and I got an additional $12,000 from the UFC because I won. I also made $20,000 in sponsorships. If you don't know what a sponsor is, make sure to check out some of the videos on this YouTube channel because I go into depth a lot about what sponsors are and how they're extra supplemental income for the fighters. So all in all, I made $44,000, but I did have to pay some expenses for this fight, just like I have to do for a lot of my other fights. Now I had a gym fee, which was 10% of my show and my win money only, and that came out to $2,400. Now my management fee, that was 20% across the board, and that came out to $8,800. Now since it was in Japan, the Japan took out a tax right before I even got my check, and that came out to $4,000. And then I also had to pay taxes when I got back into the USA, which were right around $8,000. And let's not forget about flights. You know, I flew uh, training partners out with me, coaches, and that came out to an extra $2,000 that I had to pay out of my pocket. Now, lastly, I had a $1,000 expense for training partners that I flew in during my training camp leading into this fight. This was the sparring partners, wrestling partners, guys to mimic Takanori Gomi. So all in all, my expenses for this fight came out to $26,200. And that left me with a net profit of $17,800 that I took home in my pocket. But wait, there's more. I actually, after this, immediately after this fight with Gomi, Sean Shelby released to the press that I had the knockout of the night, which in the UFC, you get a performance or a knockout of the night, that's 50 extra thousand dollars. And they released it online, so I literally thought I had $50,000. Long story short, Sean spoke too soon, the press got a hold of it, so they took that $50,000 away from me and they gave it to my training partner, actually, Johnny Case. So I was actually pretty fired up. I mean, I was 5-0 in the UFC at the time and I felt like I knocked out a co-main event, knocked out a legend in Japan. And to give it to me and then take it away, I, I was pretty upset, needless to say. Now my manager at the time got a hold of Dana White and explained the situation, how I was feeling, where I was at. So I'm sitting at home, I get a call from Dana. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Like. <laughs> And he's like, hey, we're gonna give you that 50 G's. Um, we loved your performance, great job, kid. You know, keep kicking butt. And I was like, yeah, okay, man, thank you. Thank you so much. And I hung up and I was just like, no way. Like, am I really gonna get that 50 grand, you know? And boom, I got a wire to my account. A Couple days later, 50 stacks on top of the money that I already made. Guys, make sure to smash this thumbs up button if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel and subscribe for future content. I put 10 grand to the side for taxes and I kept 40 grand. And now with the money I already made with sponsors and my show and my win, that brought me to $57,800 all in my pocket that I got to keep for this fight. It's not bad considering it was a 90 second fight and I made $57,800. I mean, that's really, really good considering the average US household income is right around 57 to 60 grand a year. So I made a yearly salary in 90 seconds. Now, you know, I gotta take into account obviously the years, 10 plus years of training, the fight camp, all that leading up, but on paper, 90 seconds, 57 Gs, let's go. Now I used the majority of this money, like I usually do. I put it to the side, I went out, I did some research, I found a great investment property. It was actually at two units and I bought it. And this was back in 2014. Fast forward today, I still own the property. It's producing me money every month and it has been for years now. It's my goal to plant these seeds, water them, so that way when I get older, 
I can have more shade, more fruit than I will ever need to enjoy my life and hopefully one day pass this all on to my family, my children, grow that jury name from poverty all the way to wealthy. It's very important guys from when investing or even fighting to keep a long-term approach to this. Nothing happens overnight. You gotta have that long-term aim, continue putting in that work today up front, and it's gonna pay off down the road. Maybe five years, maybe 10 years. Man, it took me 12 years, but it's gonna happen if you continue putting in that effort, that dedication, delaying that gratification, and one day it'll pay off huge for you. I'm happy that I made those choices, and hopefully you can too. Let me know guys if anybody wants a personal one-on-one -on -one coaching call. The link is in the description. We can go over investing, we can go over fight related stuff, whatever you want, however I can assist you, I'm here for you. Make sure to drop a comment below. Let me know your thoughts and until next time.